What's going on, bottom line viewers and NFL bettors? It's Mitch back here with another week of NFL best bets here on the bottom line view. This time for week number seven of the 2022 NFL season. My top picks versus the spread. Before I get started, don't forget to gronk, spike the like button, and subscribe to the channel for weekly NFL best bets, including my over-under picks. That video drops on Thursday. Make sure to check it out. We are absolutely on fire with our totals this season. Before I give you my favorite picks versus the spread for week number seven, allow me to introduce you to Underdog Fantasies Pick'ems. Quickly becoming my new favorite way of having some action on the NFL each and every week. Maybe even more than betting versus the spread. Let's put together a pick em parlay and show you how it works. Make two to five picks, get them all right, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night, guys. It's a great offer. As you guys can see, the multiplier right here goes from one to three to six to 10 to 20, depending on how many picks you make. And then there's also the insurance tab which allows you to make three out of four picks, four out of five picks, and still win some money on underdog fantasies pickums. Right now, their offer is double your first deposit up to $100 using the promo code BLV. So when you sign up, use that promo code BLV. So my pick em parlay for Thursday Night Football, I have Alvin Kamara over 64.5 rushing yards, Mark Ingram under 26.5 rushing yards, Will Lutz to kick more than 1.5 field goals, Kyler Murray under 1.5 passing touchdowns, and Zach Ertz over 48.5 receiving yards. Those are my picks. It's that simple. If I wanted 20 times my money, I simply put in the amount that I want to bet, and as you guys can see, the payout comes to 20 times. So 10 would be 200, 100 would be 2,000, etc. as you guys can see. Insurance would be, if I want to bet 10, it's 10 times with five picks. So I can only win four out of five and still win a, a good amount of money. So either way you play it, it's up to you. Rather, go big or go home or play it a little bit safer. We're going to go big or go home. I'm just going to put $10 on this pick'em, and we're going to have the potential to win $200. There it is. My pick'em parlay for week number seven of the 2022 NFL season. Let me know what yours is this week in the comment section below. Our first pick versus the spread for week number seven is the New York J E T. S, Jets, Jets, Jets. The Jets are getting one and a half on the road versus the Denver Broncos. Now, I must promote it only to help you guys. Okay? My Patreon. Why am I promoting my Patreon? Link is in the description, by the way. I'll also put it at the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. The reason I'm promoting it is because I gave the Jets as an early pick this week plus three as you guys know three is the keyest of key numbers in the nfl and if you jumped on that you're getting great value so if you want the best of the number in the nfl and the bets that i like early in the week later in the week the bets that i'm actually putting my money on in a given week then make sure to subscribe join patreon Link is in the description. It starts at just $3 and you get all of my bets that I'm putting my real money on. So make sure guys check it out, okay? But the New York Jets getting one and a half, I still like it. I still love it. If you watch that Packers game in week number six, the Jets were in the backfield every single play. If it was not Quinn and Williams, it was John Franklin Myers. If it was not John Franklin Myers, it was Sheldon Rankins. If it wasn't Sheldon Rankins, it was Vinnie Curry. I mean, these Jets boys 
up front on that defensive line were absolutely wrecking a pretty good offensive line in the Green Bay Packers. They now play an offensive line that's beat up, that's lost their left tackle in the Denver Broncos. A quarterback that holds on to the football. Russell Wilson seems shy to throw the football over the middle of the field. Russell Wilson is just not confident and neither is this offense and neither is the play calling. If the New York Jets can disrupt and dismantle Aaron Rodgers, who I still view as a top quarterback in this league, Matt LaFleur, a pretty well-regarded play caller, they can dismantle Hackett and Wilson absolutely all day. This Jets defense is strong against the run. They've got a pass rush. They're physical. They're fast. I love the speed at which this Jets defense is playing. And Robert Sala has those guys flying around. Plus, Sauce Gardner is really good. Like, this rookie corner is already top 10. He can go one-on-one with Cortland Sutton and slow down that number one receiver for Russell Wilson. And Wilson doesn't really have confidence in anyone else at wide receiver. I don't think the Broncos are scoring many points in this game. And while I'm not a huge fan of the Jets' offense, what I do love about the Jets' offense is their running game. Mike LaFleur has shown a lot of creativity in getting the football to his playmakers, Brees Hall, Michael Carter, even occasionally Braxton Berrios, as runners of the football to create explosive plays, which has opened up explosive play-action plays and explosive passing plays we also know that Zach Wilson is a guy that can create big plays with that right arm and all the different arm angles and the different torque that he can generate off of platform I view Zach Wilson as a guy that maybe you don't want throwing 30 40 times in a game because of the mistakes but if you can limit his passing attempts he can generate big plays And with these receivers he has out there, it's not like Pat Sertan is just going to lock down one player, whether it's Corey Davis, Garrett Wilson, whoever it is, and get away with it. No, the Jets got some depth at wide receiver, some playmakers that Wilson can spread the football to. The offensive line's a bit shaky, but like I said, they're run first, they play through their defense, and I'm just going to take the team here in the Jets that I like more. I feel better about that's playing with more momentum that's playing with more confidence that's playing with more of an identity and I don't see that with Denver even though it's at mile high I don't really care the Broncos fans don't even like their own team they leave the games early I'm gonna take the Jets plus one and a half my second pick versus the spread for week number seven is the Green Bay Packers minus five and a half I simply couldn't turn down the value with the Green Bay Packers after their embarrassing performance versus the New York Jets at home. Now, the Packers will travel to Washington to play the Commies. A Commies team without Carson Wentz, their quarterback. A Commies team that's in the news for the wrong reasons because of their owner. And a Commies team that I have little to no faith in that can score or generate any type of offense or really any type of game plan from a defensive perspective. Ron Rivera, terrible this year. One of the worst coaches in football. I continuously say this week after week after week. I don't understand how the guy still has a job. Jack Del Rio, don't understand how he still has a job after last year. Yes, Washington has the names up front, but they're not as disruptive. They're not as fast. They don't defend like the Jets do. The the Jets are just vicious right now. They're playing at a high level. Washington's not playing at that level. Sure, they got Jonathan Allen. I love that player. Chase Young might come back. Sweat's playing well. Like, they got some good players. But I'm not too worried about the pass rush. I think the Packers, they're motivated. This is a huge game for them. They've had huge expectations this year and in previous years. I don't see them dropping below 500 versus a terrible Washington team who can't pick a a blitz up offensively who can't really run the ball with any sort of success or consistency. And that's really where the Packers struggle from a defensive standpoint. But the Packers are really good against the pass. And they continue to be really good against the pass last week against the Jets. And I think in this game against Washington, they have the corners to cover those receivers of Washington. 
And they do have pass rushers that can get in the backfield. Rashawn Gary is a monster. Kenny Clark can disrupt and get in the backfield. I think the Packers with Aaron Rodgers, I trust him to cover a point spread that's not even six points. That's what I really love about it. It's under that key number of six. It's not even a full touchdown. I can see the Packers easily winning this game, going away, as this is really with their season on the line. Imagine if they lose this game and drop to three and four what the Packers organization is going to have to go through in the media. Matt LaFleur being questioned, Aaron Rodgers being questioned. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. This is a much better matchup for them. They don't have that coaching familiarity that they faced last week with the Jets. They don't have a defensive coach that stifled Rodgers year after year, matchup after matchup. And they don't face, Matt LaFleur doesn't, his brother on the other side. So I look at this as Packers had a tough game last week. Jets are better than we think, which is why I'm betting on them. And Jets had some interesting matchups with the Packers. This game, season on the line, Aaron Rodgers bounce back spot, Aaron Rodgers prove it spot, Aaron Rodgers still really good. Bet on him to stay really good. And that's what I'm doing here. Packers minus five and a half. My third best bet versus the spread for week number seven is the Las Vegas Raiders at home off of the bye, minus seven versus the Houston Texans. Both teams are coming off of the bye. I just really like where the Raiders are at coming off of the bye. I love how they looked offensively versus the Chiefs. I like how they played schematically versus the Chiefs on defense. And I like that Chandler Jones is starting to get it going. I like that they're getting healthier on offense at wide receiver, Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller at tight end. I like that they're getting healthier at corner where I think they are underrated. And I do view the Raiders as a team these next couple of weeks that's going to be rising in power rankings. I still have them fairly high. I still have the Texans fairly low. And I like this matchup for the Raiders because of two reasons. The Raiders can run the football with Josh Jacobs. They've been doing that very effectively the last couple of weeks. And they can also stop the run very, very well. And that is really where Pierce and this Texans offense has gotten it going and where they make games competitive. When the Texans have been unable to run the football, they've been unable to move the football. So I like the Raiders to jump out to a huge lead in this one at home in front of that crowd. The Texans are forced to pass. The Raiders pass rush gets after it force mistakes, force stops, and Josh Jacobs is just running for big gains. So I really like the Raiders here. I think they're starting to take to their new coach, and I think they're starting to take to both the scheme on offense and defense. And I think they're gearing up for a team that could be a sneaky wild card, kind of sneak in at the end of the year type deal where they gain momentum. This is a lot better of a football team than one and four. They've proven that in certain games, but they just got to start getting the W's. I think they do that in a major fashion at home off of the bye. Raiders minus seven. My fourth best bet for week number seven versus the spread is the Detroit Lions plus seven and a half on the road at Dallas. Now, I really like the Cowboys. The Cowboys are top five in my power rankings. I think The Cowboys, long-term, are one of the NFC contenders. Dallas is getting their quarterback back, Dak Prescott. But because of all those reasons, I do feel this is a letdown spot potentially for the Cowboys. On top of that, the Lions are getting healthier, coming off of a bye. I look at the Lions as a team that matches up okay with the Cowboys. Offensively, they can block the Cowboys, which is something that's critical to beating that defense. You have to be able to slow down that pass rush. You have to be able to throw the football against that pass rush. And I think the Lions have one of the few offensive lines that can handle Parsons and company at least relatively well. And then they can run the football. We've seen the Lions have a lot of success running the ball with Jamal Williams. Swift could be back this week. The Cowboys have struggled with good rushing attacks this year. The Eagles... And even in week one versus a bad rushing attack, but the Bucs were able to run it on them. So when teams have been able to beat them, they've been able to run it on them. And the Lions can do that. They can keep it close. Jared Goff will be comfortable in a dome setting. It's not outdoors. And most of his weapons will be intact. So the Lions do have an electric offense when that is the case. Defensively, I don't have much faith in the Lions defense. 
But I do know that the Cowboys are going to try to run the ball a ton, which slows down the game. And I do believe that Dak Prescott may be dealing with some rust. And overall, the Cowboys offense just hasn't looked that great this year. And my hope is that the Lions coming off of the bye have maybe one or two more answers to their atrocious effort earlier this year on defense. So I'm just taking the points with the Lions. I love the seven and a half. The fact that you're getting the hook on the touchdown. The Lions are really good at covering under Dan Campbell due to their fight, due to their heart. And I think they do it once again this week in week seven. My fifth and final bet versus the spread is the New England Patriots. I'm going back to the well with my Patriots. Minus eight. Now, the spread seems big until you realize that it's going to be very difficult for the Chicago Bears to score double digits in this football game. I just don't know how the Bears are going to keep this one competitive or close from an offensive standpoint. The New England Patriots defense is playing out of their skulls right now. Bill Belichick has been scheming up a storm. Their secondary is just absolute glue, sticky on the outside. They're rushing the passer very well. They stopped the great Browns rushing attack, so I'm not worried about Montgomery or Herbert in this matchup. And Belichick is... He's just really good against these type of quarterbacks. These young quarterbacks who don't go through their reads particularly well, who just look to run all the time. Belichick always has a plan to rush these quarterbacks, to contain these type of guys, and to force mistakes from these young quarterbacks. And that allows the team to build a huge lead and cover in a spot at home on Monday night. This is just the type of game that the Patriots win 27-10. to 10. It's just the way it goes. It's historic. I've seen it for years. The Patriots offensively are playing really well. They're like a well-oiled machine. They're running the football well. They're protecting the passer. It doesn't even matter who the quarterback is, although I'd prefer Mac in this spot. Wide receivers are better than you think. The rookie Tyquan Thornton is electric. Devontae Parker's winning jump balls. Jacoby Myers is really, really good. Hunter Henry's getting involved. The Patriots are just a legit team, and I don't think Vegas has caught up to that yet. They should be double-digit favorites in this game, in my personal opinion. At home, in a primetime spot, they are going to shine. Take New England to cover minus eight. Those are my favorite picks versus the spread for week number seven of the 2022 NFL season. Let me know yours in the comment section below. It's Mitch. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out Underdog Fantasy. Use the promo code BLV right now when you sign up. Check out their pickums. You know I'll be there. Peace.